Hello, welcome to the Villa View. It's time for the Luke Live Lounge, although we're going to do something very, very different and something that's really, really important this week. We're not going to do our usual spiel where we chat about what's been going on at the Villa, as lovely as all that is at the moment. We want to focus on mental health and in particular men's mental health. Really important, but we do feel that there's still a massive taboo over men's mental health and as men we're, we're trained really not to talk about things enough and and not go through things with, with each other and tonight we want to put that to bed and I'm joined by Aaron from Mental Health Muscle, massive Villa fan as well. Just before I bring Aaron in, I just want to apologise for all the tech issues that we've had. We've tried to put this out live two nights in a row and Skype is just not having it at all. So we haven't been able to do it, but we wanted to get this right. We wanted to do it right. So we've worked hard to try and come up with a solution. So we're doing it as live, but obviously it's not going out live to you. So we couldn't get you all involved as much as we wanted to, like we usually do with the chat and the comments popping up. Aaron, first off, how are you? Very well, thanks, mate. Yeah, very well. We finally got there. Here we go. Yeah, a, a lot to remember here. It's worth saying as well, probably, that there may be some things for people that have suffered with mental health issues that, that we talk about here that, that may resonate you. There may be things that make people uncomfortable, bring back bad memories. I just want to point out that rather than advertising the Luke discount at the top of the screen like we normally do, we've got three resources at the top, which we will go on to later. But just to know, if you are feeling uncomfortable at any time, you can utilise these three resources. You obviously don't have to sit here and watch it all the way through. If, if things people are talking about are making you feel bad, please, please use the resources. Now, Aaron, you, you're much better trained than me. This is this is what you do for a living, essentially. Just just talk a little bit about how important men's mental health is, please. Yeah, it is incredibly important, mate. And I think for so many years we we neglect men's mental health because of the stigma that surrounds men, uh, the stigma that surrounds men living in today's society. And for so many years, all the way back until kind of early 1900s, you know, men have been that dominant. Um, that figure, that dominant figure in society. And then I've never been really to show any weaknesses or vulnerabilities. And um, it's always been seen that men don't have any emotions and that they don't cry and they don't get sad. And I suppose that kind of myth has, has grown so strong that um, men nowadays really struggle to, to speak up and to talk out about how they're feeling mentally. So yeah, absolutely. It's imperative that we get men to talk and we get men to, to understand other men struggling and that struggle is okay. And, and struggle is something that we need to get through together as men, uh, rather than kind of putting this big wall up against um, men in general regarding what, what mental health is and, and, and how people struggle with that. Because when I, when I think of, of mental health, it, it might be a stupid way of looking at it, but it's just the way I've tended to look at it in the, in the last few years. It literally can happen to, to anyone. And in some ways, I think everyone at some point, well, not everyone, but a lot of people, most people will struggle with a mental health issue at some point in their life and that they might not even realise it. Yeah, absolutely. So mental health is something that we all have. And I think that's part of the stigma. You know, we talk about mental health being a negative thing and being a, a disease and this and this strange language that surrounds mental health. And it's all very negative connotations. But actually, we all we all have mental health. It just depends whether we struggle with our mental health, whether it's poor or whether we're pretty good in that respect. And our mental health is pretty good and our mindset and our well-being stays at a nice, happy level. Um, but everyone has mental health. And I think um, everyone goes through depressive states in their life. Everybody goes through anxious moments in their life. Everybody gets a little bit stressed. Everybody goes through hardship, bereavement, you know, losing loved ones, losing their job, difficult times, challenges. That's what life's all about. And so we all have to experience that mental health journey at some point. Um, and so it's really important that we that we eradicate this kind of myth that mental health is only a bad thing and and it only you know hits certain people. But that, that's not the truth. You know, mental health is for for everybody. And and quite frankly, it's everybody's responsibility that we talk about mental health and that we appreciate mental health on a very common kind of ground. Yeah, and I mean, I have to talk about myself for a minute. Got to be honest, I'm not 100% comfortable doing it. We've got people on the show later who are, are very comfortable and and open about talking about their mental health issues, and I respect them fully. Me, myself, I'm not 100% at doing it, but I'm going to do it on this video because, because I think it is important, and I'd be a bit of a fraud if I was coming on here expecting everyone else to do it and then not talking about myself a little bit. So was it a week or so ago now, Aaron, I reached out to you as someone who I know is very good with mental health, knows a lot about it. And I said, look, mate, I've got some things going on at, at the moment. I'm, I'm really, really struggling. I, I feel like I'm on the floor. And often that, that first step 
is making making the contact and that's the thing that that most people find difficult and something that I've mean, I spent ages writing that message, I mean and Aaron about whether whether I should do it. Now it's worth saying at this point that I did take the first step and then Aaron told me to, to call him the next day and it's been a week and I haven't called him because for whatever reason, I, whether I'm uncomfortable about it, whether I haven't got in my mind what, what I want to say yet, I haven't taken that next step. But how important is it to just make that first step and reach out in the first place? It's totally crucial, mate. And for, and for a lot of people, that's that's the biggest step that they'll ever take. You know, that first step is always the hardest and that, that applies for most things in life, I think. But it, it's kind of stepping out of that uncomfortable um, sorry, stepping out of that comfortable zone uh, and, and and stepping into the unknown and and really reaching out to someone that you know you trust, someone that uh, will understand where you're coming from and that you know will will have time and 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 give you time to talk about how you're feeling. Um, I know for me personally, likewise with you, you know, the first step for me was was talking to someone about how I was feeling. I'd identified for many years that something wasn't quite right and that my anxiety had a real grasp for hold of my life. A certain situations, certain things that I did, certain moments, you know, I found really tough and my anxiety's always, always been difficult for me in that respect. But the minute I spoke out to someone about how I was feeling when I was feeling it, specifically my wife, um, you know, things, things started to get easier because there was an understanding then of, okay, so that's, that's why maybe this is happening. And, and, and that's why he's feeling like this. And that's why he's acting like this. And his behavior then kind of reflects how he's feeling um and so stepping out for the first time to talk to someone is so crucial and you know if we can do two things as men um they are to talk about how we're feeling um and then they are in reverse to listen to people about how they're feeling you know those two are so powerful talking and listening are such powerful tools um that we have to be able to do and once we've done them we can really start to move forward then and progress into into a supportive circle get that right therapy that we need, get that right guidance and help that we need. Um, but until we start talking about it, it can be it can be very difficult, mate. So, you know, massive big hand to you for coming out and doing that. And, you know, for some people, it might seem like a, quite a small, trivial thing. But actually, for a lot of gents, that's a massive step forward. So, so huge, huge credit. Yeah, because you're talking about your own struggles there and you're saying about anxiousness and say, oh, I think, OK, that's your that's your mental health problem. And to be honest, doing this, I'm learning as I'm going. To be honest, we've got no script or anything tonight. We're literally just coming out yeah. and we're doing a show. So you're talking about anxiousness from from your point of view. Whereas to me, when I think about what I, what I perceive as my issues to be, see, anxiousness is, isn't a problem. Confidence isn't a problem. So it's, it's interesting that there's all these, these different types of, of mental health issues. And that's important that everyone knows that as well. There isn't just one set thing that is a mental health issue. It could be anything that, that sets it off. Yeah, absolutely, mate. You know, there are there are a number of mental health issues. There are a number of mental disorders. And we will all experience those at some point on that spectrum. So from mild or low case, right through to that kind of suicidal, real dark demon place where mental illness takes a hold of your day to day life and every hour, every minute of your life. Um, for me, I'm a very confident person. I'm a public speaker. I stand in front of thousands doing workshops, educating people all across the UK, but I still struggle with an anxiety disorder. And so for everyone, this is a very different kind of uh, take on, on how you deal with your own mental health. And depression and anxiety are two of the most common things. And I think there's a huge number in the population, particularly in the male population, that, that will deal with those two things in very different ways um, and kind of help themselves with those two things in very different ways. But, you know, mental health is such a broad, um, broad spectrum of things. And there's, there's no real textbook. Um, I was talking about this the other day with with someone else. And, you know, you can't write a textbook on do these 10 things and your mental health will disappear. That's just not how it works. Everyone no. would need their own 100 page textbook because it is different for everybody and how we deal with our own mental health and how we how we struggle and what challenges we face can can be so vast. Um, and that's really important to remember. And I think that's why the discussion around mental health, particularly in men, will never stop because there's nothing that will ever stop that conversation because it will just keep going on and on because everyone is so very different. Yeah, and it's like, I feel like it's important to say, like, I know I have a good life. I've got a lot of things going for me, a lot, a lot of good things going on in my life. So in, in some ways, I almost feel like a, a weird guilt 
if I feel feel down about things, and I guess a lot of people all, all feel like that. I've had a few things happen in my personal life over the last year or two, which which haven't been great. A few things happen in my career and my, and my working life and a career I want to get into that, that that have caused me issues. But generally, I know I'm, I'm I'm very very lucky. And then you end up with like this this guilt feeling that that that's what sits with me that I I shouldn't feel like this because. My problems are relative. There's there's people with a lot worse things going on in their life th- than me. But like you say, it's really hard, isn't it? Because it's all relative. But just because your life isn't like absolutely terrible and mine isn't, it doesn't mean you can't be affected. I, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, mental health doesn't pick and choose. You know, it's, there's no there's no I'm mental health and I'm only going to pick on those people with a certain label. You know, that just isn't the case. We've seen high profile athletes, high profile actors, celebrities, um, people who are doing fantastic in world business, global, international business success, who all struggle with their mental health. You know, Um, a few prime examples, uh, Beyonce, Jay-Z, Stormzy. Um, some professional footballers that we've talked about, you know, they, they all struggle with a mental health disorder at some point in their life. Some of them for only a short period, some of them for most of their life. And, and just because of their success and, and the great things that they have and the things that they have at their disposal in their life and all that money, it doesn't dictate whether you have a mental health issue or not. You know, um, I think that's really, really crucial that we try and knock down and get rid of that stigma because that that is a massive part of the stigma, you know. Oh, you've got everything. How could you possibly be depressed? That's just not the case, you know. People get depressed for so very many different reasons. Um, and, and it, you know, people don't get depressed because they haven't got money. Yes, they do in a huge part of society. Yes, they do. But just because you have got money doesn't mean you can't be depressed. Um, and that could be dictated by whatever experiences you've had in your life, childhood, family issues, uh, domestic violence, drugs and alcohol abuse, you know, for whatever reason, you know, mental health can be a, can be a, an outcome of all of that. So we have to remember that for sure. And there are no labels for mental health, you know, mental health will, will take whoever it wants to, regardless of what you've got in your life. Yeah. And there's that, there's that horrible term. I saw it used on social media last week. I think it was the Bolton manager came out, came out and said his goalkeeper needed to, to man up. That's a phrase that always annoys me a little bit because I've got, I've read quite a lot of mental health in the, in, in the last few years, to be honest. I've had friends that have, have suffered quite badly with it and I wanted to get myself up to speed. There was a book years ago now about Robert Enker, the goalkeeper that yeah. committed suicide in the, in the Bundesliga. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, before I read that, I had literally zero understanding of, of mental health. I read that book and it completely opened my eyes and I, and I thought, wow, this is a, a massive mega thing. If it can happen to him, it literally can happen to anyone. But but terms like, like man up, can you just explain a little bit why, why stuff like that is so toxic? Yeah. Um, why is it toxic? Because I think what we, we live in a day and age now whereby men, men don't need to man up. There is, there is no requirement for a man to man up these days. We are living in a society, in a world whereby Everyone is so very unique. Everybody is so very um, individual and and, and acceptingly so. You know, we've got LGBT plus going on. We've got Black Lives Matter. We've got we've got so many campaigns going on about being unique and loving, loving each other for who we are as human beings. So to tell a man to man up um, is just something that really at the moment and and will be forever more unacceptable you know um a man doesn't need to man up what if a man doesn't want to man up what if a man wants to show his emotions and wants to express how he's feeling to another human being because he needs support at the end of the day men are human beings just as much as females are you know men need help men men are allowed to show emotions men will cry you know every man watching this this um this session tonight will 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 know what it's like to cry you know there will be no man on this planet that has never cried in his life before for one reason or another um and at times you know being told to man up or grow some balls it doesn't help it just adds to the difficulty it just adds to the challenge it just feeds the demons that we suffer with day to day um, and so phrases like that have got to be eradicated and and we have to really focus on the language that we use surrounding mental health because Part of the stigma is is that language. Part of the stigma is is how we talk to each other and how we how we describe ourselves. And you know, um, just for example, so I I do a workshop with with six formers, particularly young people, kind of 16, 17, 18 years old. And one of the exercises I do with them is describing the language around mental health. And 
and all the words and phrases that that you hear in society to describe someone. So, you know, oh, they, they, they suffer with anxiety. They're a freak. They're a, they're a mental case. They're a basket case. They're they're weird. They're gay. They're a freak. You know, all of those horrible terms that we describe people um, suffering with a mental health issue or, or a mental illness is is quite truly disgraceful. And, you know, we talk about be kind, but there's so much out there at the moment, particularly on social media, as we'll talk about a little bit later, yeah. you know, where all those terms are bandied about in such a banterous way. And, and it's not acceptable, mate. And and it just adds to that toxic circle of of stigma. And we need to get rid of that. Um, and men don't want to be hearing that anymore. No, and let's just talk a little bit about mental health muscle and and how you got involved in that and why you got involved in it as well. Just give give a little bit of context to, to the viewers who who won't all know you from from social media, won't know what you do. Can you just talk a yeah, little no bit problem. about yourself? Yeah, no problem, mate. So, mental health muscle is a is a movement I founded. So I created it uh, back in two thousand and eighteen. Uh, many years working within the fitness industry, specifically as a PT in the gym, coaching, exercise, instruction, etc. Um, and using the gym for my own mental well-being and my own kind of mental health difficulties. It's, it's you know, daily saved my life for a number of years. Um, I need the gym more than I need most things in my life, part of my family um, and my friends. You know, the gym is a huge part of that. So I bought kind of that passion of mental health and that passion of understanding what it's like to suffer with a mental health issue. Um, and supporting hundreds of other people over the last kind of 10, 12 years in the community, vulnerable communities, deprived communities who who really needed to find that hope and that motivation to to step out of that dark space and into the light and and, and do well in their life. So I kind of brought those two things together and um, the passions amalgamated into mental health muscle. I didn't really start off thinking that mental health muscle was what I wanted to do. I just wanted to get loads of lads in a gym with some chalk and some dumbbells, grunt and smile at each other and talk about how we're feeling one day. And within the space of about two, three weeks, I'd I'd gathered 150 people from a very small town in Newton Abbott into one gym to exercise and talk about their mental well-being. And, and soon, within a space of kind of three months, we had thousands and thousands of followers on Instagram and the movement really kicked on. And um, for two years, we operated as a not-for-profit organization, so I set it up as kind of a charitable aimed organization. We raised lots of money. We supported over 50 people across the UK and by putting them into full-time memberships into gyms in their areas um, to support them with their mental health, um, put them on kind of recovery programs and, and, and the right support in their area. Um, and then, very sadly, last year, at the end of last year, I had to kind of take a step back from it all. Um, and, and reduce what we did in mental health muscle because of my own mental well-being. I probably went through the most depressive month or two of my life in November, December last year, just before Christmas, and I had a breakdown. Um, and I and I couldn't deal with things anymore. Um, you know, my wife and my family and my friends were a huge a huge angel in my life at that time because I, I really struggled. And, uh, and so I'm just kind of getting myself back on my feet. I've spent the last nine months doing that. Um, and feel great, feel in a really good place now and able to kind of bring all that back again. Mental health muscle still very much exists. It's a huge movement in the fitness industry specifically. Got a lot of high flying athletes, celebrities that all endorse it and support the movement. Um, and one day I will bring it back again as a as an organization. But for now, um, just let it do its thing. It's not disappearing. If anything, it's growing day by day, uh, particularly right now in this lockdown pandemic period, whereby gyms yeah. are shut and mental health is, is rife. Um, so it is a nightmare. Um, so hopefully mate, yeah, that, that, that will come back one day. It's my baby and I, and I will, I will, I will born it again for sure. Yeah. Cause fitness isn't the, isn't the only answer, but it, it can be a big thing for, for people work, working out and it can be really good for people's mental health. So we're just gonna have a little section now t talking about fitness. Just, just talk about what, what it, what it does for you and how it helps with your mental health before we bring yes. in our, our guest speaker. Yeah, no problem, mate. So, so very quickly, I suppose it uh, it's what it provides for me. It's the belonging, it's the community aspect of the gym and fitness that I that I thrive off. It's the place where I can go and walk through the front door and forget about everything in the world. Uh, put my headphones on, lift some iron, lift some heavy weight, and really focus on me and find clarity of mind and really cleanse my soul, if you like, from all of the stresses and challenges that we face in life. 
Um, and I know I can do that in the gym. And when that's taken away from you, it's very difficult. Um, you know, home workouts just aren't the same. So for me, the gym is a place of sanctuary. It's a place of safety, security, you know, where I know I can go and just work on my mental well-being and, and find that safe place again and, and, and find that kind of um, zone, if you like. Um, and, you know, it releases endorphins and all of those positive hormones that we need in our body that make us feel good about life. Um, you know, I can go from walking into a gym pretty, pretty down and within the space of 10 minutes, having done a set on the bench, um, feel like I'm on top of the world. And, and that's exactly what, what kind of fitness in the gym does for us. Um, and I know that Tony, who's, who we're going to introduce in a moment, you know, is, is going to talk about that because that's kind of his area of expertise and, and equally understands the power of fitness and exercise on our well-being. Yeah, it's obviously great that we can bring someone like Tony Daly on, someone who would have been a hero to, to, to many people, to play for Villa, nicest guy in football. Just just how good is it that we've got people like Tony Daly who can come and talk about stuff like this? Incredible, mate. Incredible. Especially doing this on the platform that we're doing it on, you know. I know I know Aston Villa is, is important to people, but, but mental health is more important, really. And, and the fact that we can combine the two communities together to be able to do this tonight is incredible. So having Tony on is 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 complete dreamy for me you know for a lot of people watching this tonight they'll probably be sat at home thinking oh my god look who it is talking about mental health what what an incredible story what an incredible thing that these guys have been able to do and can't thank tony enough for kind of giving us his time tonight for sure yeah just before we bring him in you've you've raised a, a valid thing really about this obviously being a villa platform now it might be that people who aren't Villa fans will all end up watching this video. Hopefully, hopefully that's the case. But as we've got a platform of mainly Villa fans, obviously in the, the world that we're in at the moment, in the, in the lockdown, we haven't been to the football since since, since March. I mean, the last time I was at a, a Villa game was when I was with you at yeah. Wembley, which feels an absolute lifetime ago now. Just fitness is obviously routine, will play a big part in, in fitness as well. For, for me at the moment, and for many people who will be watching this video, part of my routine He's going to the villa every two weeks. I know that I'll always be in Birmingham. I know that I'm going to see my family and my friends in Birmingham because I know I'm going to be there every two weeks because I'm going to Villa Park. And that's just been ripped away from, from us all. So what routine-wise, what, what can you do when your routine is taken away? <sighs> so I realise I put you, you on the spot there. That, yeah, no, it's fine. You have, you have to find alternatives, Dan. I think in life we... Too often we we put all of our eggs in one basket, and as and as amazing as that is, when everything's going well, it, there, there's no need to change it, you know. But in life, not everything goes well all the time, and we've all experienced no. that this year. And we have to have alternatives. I think for me, it's a it's a great point that you make because the last eighteen months since since last year, I've really had to work on that because for me, it was only the gym, my gym, my mental health my training, my bodybuilding, that was what that was what I did. That was my purpose. That was everything. And all of those other importances in my life, my music, my guitar, my piano, my wife, my daughter, my garden, my house, all of those really important things just kind of went by the wayside a bit. And you get so wrapped up and carried away with, with those visions that you have for your one goal. And that for me was the gym. And I've really learned to, to take a step back from that. So equally with the football, yes, Aston Villa is the best club in the land and we love the villa and we love the football and we love the goals and we love the players signing and the transfer windows and but when that stops you've got to have something else to to prioritize your mind and to find value in you know and for a lot of us that's got to be our families that's got to be our friends that's got to be watching movies with popcorn at night time and really embracing those those grateful moments that we have that we tend to forget very easily when everything's going really well and we've just got this one interest. We have to kind of spread that interest because not everything goes well all the time. And when something stops, you need to be able to fall back on other things. Yeah, because I've not really thought about it. It's just coming to me on the, on the fly now. So obviously Villa, not going to Villa, I've been doing it since I was seven. So I've been doing that every two weeks my whole life virtually is a, a massive thing to have lost and a massive thing for many people to have lost watching it on TV isn't the same but when I think about it now if it hadn't have gone and I probably wouldn't be sat here doing this this now because the Villa View it was gone so actually not going to the football has brought the Villa View back which has been a good thing for my mental yeah. health even though I've lost something which hasn't been good to my mental health if that, if that makes sense yeah yeah absolutely and I think I think you know you see it banded about a lot about the football you know, uh, oh, it's such a bad thing for my mental health when Villa are doing really bad. And it's such a great thing for my mental health when Villa are doing really well. And, and that is that is true. And yeah. so 
when we, what we talked about earlier about mental health affecting anyone and with anything, that's a prime example of those experiences that we can all go through some things. You know, when Villa are losing and doing really bad, I don't feel personally my mental health is affected because I have value in such other things in my life that Villa will just keep going on, you know. And for me, that's very different to you, I suppose, or, or and other Villa fans who, when the Villa, when the Villa were, you know, not doing very well, and it was all about relegation and, oh my God, what's yeah. going to happen? You know, it's different for everybody, isn't it? I guess I'm just, again, still thinking on, on, on the fly here. So like when Villa were in relegation trouble, Villa went down, that would have maybe impacted what I was doing with the Athletic, for example. That So Villa not being a Premier League team, it may have been bad for that. It may have been bad for my for my media aspirations and things like that. If, they, if they'd gone down, now they're doing well. Things on that side seem like they're going well and, and feel like they're back on track. But when I think of my own mental health, actually, I can tell if I'm in a good place or a bad place based on how I react to Villa losing. So if, my, if I feel down and my life's not going well... Villa losing is like the worst thing that can happen and it, and it just adds to it. But obviously, I never like Villa losing anyway. But if I'm in a good place, it doesn't consume me, if, if, if that makes sense. So Villa, for me, is actually in some ways an indicator of how well I feel I'm doing in my head and in my mind. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 so, and, and you're right to feel that way, mate. And I, yeah. I would imagine there's going to be people tonight feeling that way as well. Exactly. And can relate to exactly what you said. And I think I think that is something we need to really focus on is that, you know, for, for some people that that's going to be true for others, not. And that's OK either way. You know, that is OK yeah. either way. Um, so, yeah. Well, as you're the, the fitness professional, I'm going, to, I'm going to feel very out of place next to you and Tony. But I'll, I'll let you bring in our, our next speaker, Aaron. Bring him bring him in. Yeah. Come on, Tony. On you come. Are you there, mate? Good evening, guys. Yeah, the lockdown's been okay, um, uh, considering you're talking about uh, mental well-being. And Aaron made a great point about uh, structure. I think it's really important. I mean, that's what that, that's what I've tried to do in terms of uh, exercise. is really important to me. And you know, uh, first thing you think about for me, it's really important. A, a uh, for uh, my finances, it's my job doing that. Yeah. More importantly, but more importantly, it, it, it's a release for me. Fitness has been doing it, you know, since since God went, God, God knows when, and it's something that's really, really important to me. So at first thought, you think about, oh my word, you can't get to the gym, but there's so much thing else you can do, you know, in terms of getting out, um, having structure. Um, for me, it was being able to do some bodyweight exercises uh, uh, in the house, uh, in the garage, keep myself going, and that's really, really, really helped me. Obviously, you work on the on the fitness side of things, and both of you work on on the fitness side of things. But how important is the mental aspect of fitness, and not only what fitness does for your body, but what it does for your brain and what it does for the mental side of things? Very much so. I mean, I I, I can go back to a time when I'd, I'd left Villa and gone to Wolves for you know a, a time of record signing, record signing, and at that particular time, uh, which ended to be quite serious in me, and I was injured for the majority of the time there. And myself, then it, it, it wasn't great for me at that particular time, um, personally, in terms of my own mental well-being. And the only thing that seemed to help me was going in the gym and you know and releasing those. It's not great when you, you you're on a bike cycling, you look out, and you, you you can't do the things that you're watching other players playing football. So that was really really difficult. So for me, um, it, fitness is very very important. As you know, it, it releases those, those happy hormones and makes you feel great. I always, I always say to my clients, you know, who, who, whether whether they're super fit or you know clinically obese, it's important that you exercise because of, you know for feeling that feeling of, of self worth and, and and feeling feeling great that self esteem, and it does. It makes you feel so much better when you exercise, whether it's you know uh, playing a game high intensity for 90 minutes or going down the park or uh, uh, walking with the kids or having a 10, 15, 20 minute walk. It works. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree with Tony. There's this, there's this real power that exercise can give us. And for some people, it's just that belonging factor as well. I think Tony will relate with that one, you know. Being a community, being a part of a football team, a rugby team, being a part of a gym is quite empowering for people. And, you know, um, 
personally for me in my story you know the gym the gym saves my life on a regular basis um and you know it, it keeps my mental health at bay and it, and it keeps me on the straight and narrow and it allows me to kind of release all of those demons that i struggle with from time to time um, and the gym is a safe place for me and i know that a lot of people can relate to that kind of ethos you know the gym is a place of worship not in a religious sense but it's in a spiritual sense whereby i know that i walk through that gym door i get into the gym and it's my own head on it's my place i can lift lift my weights and i can work on my mind and, and find that clarity which i can't find anywhere else and so i think lockdown has been a real challenging thing for people because for that aspect it's been taken away from them but you know equally there is this kind of you can get outside it doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you're kind of releasing those positive endorphins and getting involved in that physical activity as often as you can you know, there is a ways and a means to dealing with it in, in these difficult times. And it is difficult. You know, it is really difficult, particularly if you haven't got a lot of kit or you haven't got a lot of imagination to, to kind of change those exercise routines up a bit. Um, but for me, Jim, you know, absolutely, you know, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here without it for sure. No, no. Tony, you talked about that time when you were you were injured at Wolves, and I mean, correct me if, I, if I'm wrong here, I might be completely way off base, but you talked about having a, a little bit of mental health issues in terms of when you had that injury and you're at a new club, you obviously want to be playing football, you're not doing what you love. Was that a big exercise that you, you'd have ever talked about with anyone? It was a, you know, stigma, you know, something that you'd never, ever chat about. It was very, very difficult. To be quite honest with you, um, uh, Graham Taylor, uh, God bless his soul, was uh, uh, innovative in, in that. And it was quite, I uh, had the ability to go and see sports psychologists, which helped me immensely. But that was unique. But the thing was, it was all hush hush. Um, yeah. You know, I knew I knew three, four, five players only afterwards were seeing the same sports psychologist. You never chatted to your teammates about it or anything like that. So, you know, you, you go into a, a, a sport which is supposed to be all macho and, you know, all. This this pump and everything else, but you know it is our footballers are probably the most delicate people. You never go the emotions are like this, you know, and and, and it's very very difficult for them. So to actually um, really to see a sports psychologist really helped. But it was all hush hush. It was really quiet, and it, and I was at that time particularly quite embarrassed about having to see a sports psychologist. But yeah, things have completely changed now and everything else. And I think yeah. it's great that there's actually uh, being open you know about about this and uh when they're feeling down or you know not feeling uh at their best that they can talk about it because talking about it's so important uh, something i've recognized and realized that now fortunately yeah. tony what 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 do you think's changed tony what what do you think's changed what's the reason for the change from kind of your playing days to now what's you had a sports psychologist then we have them now like what, what's what's been the difference? What's what's been the the impact that's that's allowed players now to come out, and we see it so often now. Players coming out and talking about their mental struggles, you know, more openly and kind of more um, accessibly. So, so what's changed? Aaron, I think we talk about the one or two percent difference. When, on a physical side, on a physical aspect, uh, one or two percent difference. If the two teams people look the same, you know, and you know. And we talk about fitness, about the fitter side in the end. If they both got the same technical ability, not pound for pound, uh, the team that's fit is going to win the game. Whether it's a last minute, you know, uh, recovery on the line to save a shot goal and goal, or a last minute burst in the box from the midfield from 30 yards to get a tapping goal, it wins the game. The fitter side wins. That's one or two percent difference. And then all of a sudden now, you realise the mental side. I'll give you an analogy or an example. We talk about uh, players. You know, a, a £40 million, £50 million signing, scored goals for fun at his old club. You know, it's a great signing, comes to a new club, complete failure, an absolute flop, does not score a goal, look like, doesn't look like, looks like a shadow of the person he was. And that's not because he's lost the ability, it's because of this here, yeah, the mental side of it. So they realise that if you can get that, you can get that right, you can speak to that person and, and, and you know, you can uh, channel all those demons inside of him then it would really, really help them. And that's recognised that now, that if you could produce a player and it's down to the mental side of it, which half the time it could be, then you, you're going to get your team or your individual players playing at their best, that one or two percent difference. As a result, yeah. teams become aware, players recognise it and not scared to talk about it because they know it's something that's part and parcel of football now. Yeah. yeah. It's really interesting. Yeah, I mean... 
you having you both on, and obviously you both you both well versed in, in exercise and fitness and, and and how important it, it can be. What about people who? I'm not saying they can't do exercise, but people who exercise isn't their thing. What what steps can can they take to improve their mental health over over this period? And men in particular, what what can they do? We, we talk about fitness, and uh, first people think about when you talk about oh, you need to get fit, or you need to go down to gym, or you need to exercise. I think oh my life, I'm not bench pressing, pressing. I see all these uh, match men in the gym, or oh, 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 look at that person running uh, ten kilometers, flying through all over the place. First step is simple. The minute you can struggle, even sitting in your chair, doing certain exercises, whether it's getting up, you know, a lot of people are, are uh, uh, with their work, especially working during lockdown, are stuck in front of people, even getting up every, you know, every hour or so, whether to make, go to the toilet or make, a, go get a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, a drink of water, you know, getting up, stretching those legs, doing some stretches, doing, you know, Will, will help and enhance you. So starting from the basics will help, will make you, make you feel better, and then building up from that as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I Just just uh, another example, I, I had a client over the first of lockdown who I supported with kind of uh, weight management, etc. cetera, and, um, and, and merely only the fact that they did 10,000 steps a day had a huge impact upon their well-being and had a huge impact went about things and how they thought about things you know someone that wasn't really gym friendly didn't really understand the gym had never really been in one before uh didn't go out running or anything like that but was quite confident quite competent walking and walked quite, quite a lot so we just really made those kind of ten thousand steps a day which is any human being can do that um you know get outside make those steps doesn't matter whether it's two thousand three thousand six ten you know but we can get outside and make that step and and we've got to start so somewhere and I think people need to remember that I think we can dive into the deep end very quickly with things all the time we want to we want to achieve the goal within a space of two weeks you know and realistically that's never going to happen um, and we need to accept that because if we don't it will challenge this and make this very very difficult to kind of compete with all of that um, so we need to make sure that we're just inspiring people to get out there and do the best they can and if that's a thousand steps a day compared to no steps a day for the last six months of their life then they're going to be making progress and progress is so important. It's those small achievements that psychologically we can really embrace and really take on board and, and, and you know, it's powerful. When, when you look back and think last week I smashed 10,000 steps a day and now this week I'm going for 12,000, then that's an achievement. That's a huge part of their progress stage and, and we have to remember that. We can't just keep doing um, this kind of criticism of people all the time. You know, everyone's different. Everyone has their own kind of levels to work with. And once they've hit those levels, they can see huge results. And, and that's what it's about. And all of that will do wonders for this, you know. Yeah, and you can, I guess you can set goals and you can measure measure success in, in different ways, can't you? Tony, you, you touched on your your business at the start. There'll be a lot of people whose work has been been affected by, by 2020 and, and COVID. People, people's businesses will have gone under, people will have lost jobs, there'll be people out there now desperately try, trying to find work. What have, what have the battles been with your business? What, what have you found hard over, over this 2020? Uh, obviously, uh, things being closed, I mean, that, 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 that's been the main issue. So uh, for me, it, it, it's all about uh, resetting, thinking, Trying to think smart, stay for the game. A lot of people are going now. Is is that the first during the first lockdown? I converted a lot of my stuff onto online, and I made myself yeah. online friendly. You know, so uh, um, I've you know been able to maintain uh, business uh, during that side of it as well. And it, we've got the outdoors at that time as well in the summer. It was nice and warm and everything else. But as the cold uh, winters come in the dark night, yeah. people want to go outside. But it's probably the best time to go out and exercise as well. You know, not not in the dark, but you know, through that time. Yeah, during the day, especially in lockdown, being going out, taking advantage of it, you know, ability, you, you're not being at work and exercising. That's what it's, it's really key. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah, and just, just to finish with, with, with you, Tony, again, we thank you so much for, for coming on. Just wanted to put, you're obviously a footballer, people would have looked up to you, people would have worshipped you when you when you were playing for, playing for Villa. I just for you, I just wanted you to talk about how important it is that, that we do communicate as many that we do speak to each other, we do look out for each other, look after ourselves as well. I think it's imperative. I mean, don't keep anything uh, under. Speak speak to your mate, your, you know, your, your, your parents, your, your, 
of your brothers and sisters. Open up, have a chat to them. I think it's really important because you need to share it. So we keep uh, people on that. It's just going to get you're just going to get deeper and deeper in a hole. It's important to chat. And on the other side as well, you know, check in on people. You know, have a chat. Have a chat. You haven't spoken to somebody a while. Give them a call. How are you? Yeah. You know how things. You know, and that that could be the, you know, if there's the need to actually come out and talk to talk to you. You know, it actually just put yeah. a phone up to people. We've got Zoom now as well. You know, or, or the equivalent or Skype or whatever. You know, just get on a call. Say hello. Yeah, it's very, very important to check in with each other and, and look out for each other, especially at these important times and these unprecedented times as well. Tony, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. I, I love talking to you, as I say. You, I always say that you're the nicest man in football and thank you for your patience as well with, with all the technical issues that we've had and I'm sure I'll speak to you again soon. Right, we've got Ty joining Aaron, Aaron and myself now, Ty Bracey, who obviously you, you'll all know from the channel before and activity on, on social media. So... Ty, I, I know that you're obviously a, a very open person in general, but you're also very open about your mental health, which I absolutely commend you for. Again, it's, it's important. Do you just want to speak a little bit about your mental health, how, how it is on a daily basis? Well, a bit of a backstory started from being 12 years old, um, of where I just assumed that I was a bit of everything. Um and that's just because that's how my mum is as a person. So I just assume that I inherited that trait of just yeah. to be fearful of everything and, you know, a bit scared of everyone and the world. And it wasn't until I got to about 18 or 19 that I realised I, I, I wasn't getting over this fear that I've lived with for such a long time. And that's where it, all of that started shoulders. Um, I'd been on a series of antidepressants uh for a, a substantial amount of time um i've been antidepressant free now for since i was just shy of 27 um of where i wanted to use with antidepressants like i'm not trained on you know medically or anything like that so just from my own experience but i found it the root of my problem wasn't being solved by my antidepressants it was more so suppressing it so it was got me thinking about them and I was in a mental headspace of where I wanted to tackle it head on so yeah. mental health every, every day I mean I have a day here and there where I have a bad day um, and most days I wake up now and I'm very positive um, I don't really talk, talk about on Twitter um, probably as much as I should I probably should do it a little bit more than I should um, but you two will know uh, on my Instagram I keep that private completely so um, where it's just my close friends and family and I'll reach out daily you know every day I'll post something positive yeah. um last year you know I mean more so with you know the rise you, you know the better the, the the bigger your account blows up on on social media Dan you'll you'll know that you know that the decision when Villa do well you know you, you Twitter does well um and there's been times where people have said things to me that I I've literally messaged Dan why I've got tears rolling down my face because of the, the horrible things that people have said to me. And it takes me a while to get over it, and I do get over it. And the, the problem is with social media is people don't think before that that's, the, that, that that's problem one. And problem two is that they don't understand what they're doing to the other person behind the screen who they're talking to because you have access to everybody. Anyone can tweet. And... Yeah. Uh, and that's the side that I've really struggled with, you know. And Dan, Dan has had a barrage. Dan, you know, I commend you, mate, because you, you're, you're a really you're someone who I look up to in terms of how strong and how well you deal with interacting with people on socials. I see some of the abuse that you get, mate, and I think, and I think to myself, if that was me, that would cripple me. Like I am just a people pleaser. I like I don't ever want people to think bad of me, and I think that that might be something that came with anxiety from me youth the fear of not being accepted by everybody and you know now I understand I live in a world where I can't please everybody and um I had an uncle who took his own life um a few years ago and I watched it crumble um my family to pieces and um 
I had an old friend um, who once upon a time we were really close and we hadn't spoke the last few years who uh, unfortunately took his own life. Uh, and we, we, the, we went to his service on Saturday and I watched some yeah. of the strongest people I know, and I mean the strongest people I know, break down and it broke me. And people, like I probably don't reach out to you guys enough when I'm just having a niggly day and I'm having one of those days where I just can't fight something off. I only really talk about it when something is really, really messing up my head. And I just want to reach out to you and say that please talk. I've watched the implications. I've watched people suffer. I've watched people fall apart. Please talk about your issues and don't feel that, you know, this is to, to females as well, you know, but, you know, the rise in in male suicides is you know is rising um please just talk to somebody or talk to a stranger even reach out to me on twitter my dms are open to anybody they go into my message request but i read them as they come in always please reach out anything you ever say to me will always stay in confidence talk to people i've been there and i'm going to open up about something that i, I, I had no intention of opening up on so uh me and my for people who don't know on twitter uh, i have a two-year-old son uh, i don't really talk about my personal life much on twitter i have a two-year-old son and me and me and my son's mom separated in in uh we split up in january on my around my 30th birthday um i had a six-week furlough period of where i had a lot of time to myself and i thought it would do me the world of good and it definitely was the opposite of that i got myself into a hole that i couldn't get out of and every single day I woke up, I tried to shake it and I worked hard. And there was a pit, I spent a lot of my time at Clint Hills. And if anyone who's from the West Midlands doesn't, or whoever is watching, doesn't know what Clint Hills is, it's a place with amazing views, a place I could find peace in my thoughts. And there was, a, there was one day where I had to go there and never come back. I had the, a point where, sorry if I get a bit shaky with my voice um it's all right, mate. you do it mate there there got to a point where i had on my journey up to clint hills because it's a bit of a walk from where you park i i had planned on never coming back down i won't go into details about what i had planned but i planned on never coming back down and then you know there was a little tiny little whisper in my head that just said like you i've got a little boy that needs his dad you know and it, i mean if i if i didn't have him you know I'd, I'd 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 be now and that's where i can say if you reach out even just talking about it a phone call i don't care send your number if it's to a stranger to me to dan dan helps I doesn't know in real life and I know he does, and he doesn't get enough credit because Dan and Aaron do a lot for people who who they don't even know. They take time out of their day. And before I'd even met Dan in person, Dan would go to the back of the earth, and same with Aaron, to make sure I was okay and do kind things for me. Just please be kind to everyone around you and reach out, just talk. Even people, what's wrong? Self with good people, and I firmly believe good things happen. If social media is the cause where you see people doing things in their stages of life and you feel like you're behind, come away from social media, have a break from it. It's like you've been framed. You only see the best parts of people's lives. You see what people want you to see. It's a it's a shield, you know, it's, it's a digital version of yourself. So, and I've been able to shield my issues and things that go on in my head with Twitter because people on Twitter only see what I want them to see, which should predominantly is football, which is the only stuff I really want people to see. Please, 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 for anybody watching this, please talk to somebody if you're experiencing those thoughts. Because I've been in that place where I nearly took everything away. Please just reach out. Please talk to somebody. You are important. 
to somebody, to at least one person. It doesn't matter one person, five people, ten people. It doesn't matter. Please reach out. Please talk to somebody. Thanks, Ty. Thanks, Ty, for sharing that. And, and I think that's what people need to hear. I know for some people, opening up like that is is is, is the hardest thing ever. I've been um, terrified, Aaron. I've been so scared. The tech issues last night, I was pulling my hair out like, yeah, I, I, nothing has been scripted. Everything I said then, you know, it's yeah, just literally yeah. rolled off the tongue. And, you know, I went into places I didn't think I was ready to even talk about to, you know, especially YouTube. And, but if someone can know that I've experienced that and I'm here today, and if that can just help one person, then I'm more than happy to open up about my struggles if it just helps one person. Yeah. And Aaron and Dan, like, I want to thank you so much for firstly asking me to come on and share my experiences because you both know I've struggled because you're both two of my closest friends and for taking time out of your day to raise awareness for others because you two are awesome and I love you both to pieces and I don't tell you both enough. Sopping we we love you as well, man. We love you as well, man. You, I just wanted to pick you up on something that you, like, you were you, you were at, like, a service the other day and you saw some of the, like, strongest people you, you know break, break down and, like, the strength can be shown in so many different ways and I think you don't actually realise how strong you, you've just done there. I, I, I would never be able to do that. Not, yeah. not a chance. There's, there's no way I'd, 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 I'd do it. I, I, I just wouldn't. So a, a fraud, like, congratulating you, you, you and stuff. But that, what you've just done, it is strong. It's one of the strongest things you can do, in my opinion, putting yourself out there on YouTube and going into personal detail and, and talking about stuff like that is ju just massive. So when you're saying people are the, the strongest people you know, I feel like you don't put yourself in, in that bracket enough and just by the, the way you speak to people and, and the way you are, I think you're way stronger than, than you believe. Yeah, you are so. And, and I think what, what you've kind of put into complete context there is this is this message that we're trying to give tonight. And that is like, he wants to be the alpha male. But truly, no one really knows what the alpha male is because part of the alpha male is showing that strength in emotion and that's what you've just done, mate. And, and and that takes a lot of courage. And it takes a lot of, you know, I'll, I'll say it. It takes a lot of balls. It really does to to talk about our emotions and our vulnerabilities. Because as men, we never want to portray that. To, um, and, and the fact that you've just done that. And, and and we all try and do that day to day as often as we can. That, that's really important. And, uh, and it is just taking that one step forward to do that. So huge massive hand, mate. And, and I know, and I know, mate, that there will be a handful of people, if not more, that take something massively away from that tonight. And, and it's empowering, it's inspiring because we're not alone and there are people around us probably within 10 minutes of you that have gone through exactly the same thing that you've gone through. And as because I think we think we're alone in this journey and that we're the only ones going through it about it. But actually, you know, there's a lot of blokes that go through the same shit. And um, and it's really important that we talk about it, mate. So so massive, massive hand. Big love, mate. Big love. Yeah. No, I, yeah, thanks. I, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me. No, mate, for, for opening up like that. It's, it's it's a massive thing. And as I say, it's, it's such a brave thing as well. And I can, can only applaud you. And we, we love you as well. And we, we want you to be okay. And you know that you can always talk to either of us. And hopefully that's, that's a massive thing for you. Just yeah. remember, everyone, it's okay to not be okay. It's... The, the problem is the weather outside, not you. Remember that. You can get out yeah. of any storm. It doesn't last forever. Just remember no. that. That's all I've learned. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, after every storm comes the sun. That's so true, right? Absolutely. Big hand for Ty for doing that. Thanks for having us. Um, so, hi, Dawes, you with us? Yes, man. How's it going, right? Hello. Yeah, very well, thank you. So, we've got Chris joining us for the kind of section at the end. Uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about kind of lockdown, I suppose, and um, the kind of control constraints that we're going through, uh, the mental health difficulties that people seem to be facing under the lockdown pandemic. I just wanted your take on it, really, Chris. So so how, how have you been dealing with lockdown? Or how, how has it been? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been the same, really, for me. Um, I mean, to be honest, like every day is a bit of a struggle anyway, you know, like every day is, is tough, regardless of uh, if you're in lockdown or not, you know. So um, it's obviously harder not been able to socialize and see your your friends and family um it was really nice to get back there to work for the last sort of three and a half to four months um 
but I think the novelty factor is well and truly worn off, and I think there's uh, there's some serious um, there's some serious issues that are going on behind behind closed doors, and uh, we um, you know we we just need to 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 look at it. You know, we can look at it, at the economy for what it is, but also looking at people's mental health is is uh, important. You know, the most important thing that you can. Um, you can do it's the most prized piece of, of any human is their is their is their mind and their mental health and um uh you know uh, i just hope everyone can kind of can get through it really and and we can all come out the other side and and um and be and be and be better for that and stronger for that you know because i think you're you're like me you're quite, quite a sociable person i think the biggest thing i have struggled with in lockdown is not being able to say my name go to birmingham when I want to, because obviously it's something that I, I do so so much. Just because you, obviously you don't, you know, your family's in Northern Ireland anyway. I know, but you, you you haven't been able to see them at all. I'm presuming throughout the, the whole of lockdown. Just how difficult has that been? Yeah, I mean, I haven't been back home since Christmas, since last Christmas. So I was due to go back home for my birthday there in October, but then get back. But um, it's hard. It is hard. Um, luckily, you know, FaceTime and Zoom and all all the rest of it can. Um, can help and you never feel like you've not seen people because you know with social media uh, and instagram etc you, you kind of feel that you feel that, that you know what's going on in people's in people's lives which is kind of nice in a way but um yeah it's been tough it's been tough i mean it'd be nice to get back home and just see my friends and, and family and spend a bit of time with them but um who, who knows when it's gonna when it's when it's gonna when it, you know it's it's gonna get back back to normal but um, if it suffers in and in, in silence, just try and you know speak out. And um, we always say, well, I always say on Twitter, we're you know we're a can or if, if if I see certain little fans going through a rough time, you know I'll, I'll always drop a message and just say, listen, anything that you need, just just drop me a message. And um, and there's been a few of those tweets. There's been a few people that I've seen on Twitter, um, you know, trying to reach out and and, and going through a tough time. So. Um, I would only, I would only ever say just, just talk. You know, don't bottle it up because if it, if it becomes a, a bigger, a bigger issue than than um, than it actually could be, and um, you know, I've uh, like I say, I've I've suffered with with ups and downs and mental health issues and and, and depression since since probably I was like 10, 11, 12. So from a very, very, very young age, and um, I mean, with me, it probably all started with like a lack of confidence and and. Um, not being very good at school, and you know, you know, being bottom of the, of the class, um, and those little, those little things can really, really, you know, they can stick, they can stick with you for for a long, long time. And um, I think if you, you know, if you get if you get knocked as a kid, and your confidence gets knocked as a kid, you know, it's very, very, very hard to 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 repair that. And um, yeah, that was kind of where where it all stemmed with me. And you know, I'm 34 now, but. Still, look back at those days in school with 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 really you know, really unhappy memories, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. They they talk about childhood being some of the most uh, impactful and the life experiences that we have. And what have you done to to work on those things from those early childhood days in in your adult life to 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 try and make things more stable for yourself? It's hard. I mean, obviously. Um just trying to work hard really and trying to put my energy into 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 work and and you know being a good husband and you know kind of looking after my flat and taking pride in my flat and taking pride in, in where i live and trying to trying to be a good good friend to people um trying to listen but um it was it's tough it's tough because you know uh it always cre- it always creeps up you know it it, it always creeps up and sort of can sometimes it can um it can really really take hold of you and and um and uh and you you know you just don't want to get out of bed but even now like I, I suffer massively from from like confidence issues and and uh doubt self doubt um you know if yeah. if we're ever sitting around a table if there's like a table of friends or 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 a crowd of, a crowd of lads or whoever and I'm right for a few pints I'll never I'll never jump in and try and like say a joke because what if it's not funny and, and there'll be laughs? You know, you, you know those those kind of small things, and then you yeah. just feel like yeah. you feel really, really, you feel really shit about yourself. And um, and uh, but yeah, no, it's been it's been a constant struggle for years. But with me, it all stemmed. It all stemmed. Um, it 
lost them with school really and and um and really hating school and and uh you know i especially in belfast growing up i didn't pass my 11 plus which is an exam in primary school that you take to get the secondary school i didn't pass that so i went to um uh, quite a rough school uh in belfast and i was there for two years and you know, i got i got punched i got punched in class and, and knocked out and you know b- b- bullied and and, and 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 all sorts you know so my mum quickly dragged me out of that school and, and luckily she was teaching in, in, a, in a really good school which was a, a grammar school so i moved over there for for, for three years and uh eventually left yeah. left in fifth year but no, I don't envy. I don't envy the kids of today. I don't envy. You know, I've got nieces and nephews in in, in school, and obviously back in my time and our time, there was no social media. There was no there was no um, mobile telephones. And I think growing up as a kid now is as hard as it's ever been because the pressure the pressure that they're that they're under. You know, you see these Instagram pages and. And these influencers and bloggers and you know they they portray this wonderful wonderful happy life and and uh, take it from me like nothing's as glamorous as, as you see I've, I've i've been to the parties i've met the people i've done that i've been there i've got the t-shirt i could write a book on on it you know i've lived in london for 10 12 years and and nothing's as glamorous as it seems and nothing I and mean, people don't live that 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 lifestyle that they portray on social media it just doesn't exist um so if there's one bit of advice i could give to people is you know, just try and try and be the best version that you can be of yourself. You know, don't don't set your goals to what others are doing. Just try and do what you do and do the best that you can do in life. And whether or not you're you're working in a job that you might not love, just try and be the best version of you. And um, if you if you be the best version and work hard at what you do and, and, and be a nice person to your friends and family, then then you know you'll succeed. And and that's enough, really. You know, you'll find inner happiness and, and inner peace. And uh, um. Thankfully now I'm kind of getting to that stage now where I'm 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 a lot more comfortable in in you know in my professional life and personal life and uh, but it's tough it's tough and everyone suffers with with really really um, tough times and tough days and um, I say those days that I just want to I just want to stay in bed and and you know keep the curtains closed and and not yeah. see anybody or speak to anybody but um, but I know that a lot of people are, are are going through it and we all put on a, a brave face and and um, but I would say just talk, just talk. Don't bottle it up. Just always talk. I think what I've learned tonight so far is that there's like so many like different triggers, and there's like so many different versions of the, of things that people people can suffer with, with with mental health. Like that people suffer with with different things. I'm rambling a little bit here. I know know what I'm trying to sound. I don't, don't think I'm getting it out. But Dolan saying about the the school and like the confidence and the knocks that he's had as as a kid. That, a big trigger and now obviously you come on come on the villa view everywhere you say that like confidence is a, is like a big thing but to come on and do like the villa view live every week that's that's like that's, that's a big, big big thing like counteracting your your fear if that makes sense yeah yeah no definitely i think you just gotta try and take it head on as well like you know like yeah just it's funny it's a it's a, it's a strange one it's a strange one. i still like honestly deep down like don't I don't think an awful lot of, of myself, um, but luckily I've got a great support network and great family and a great wife and, and great friends that that are that are always there, you know, to to kind of to cheer me on and and um, and kind of build me up, you know. And uh, but it's it's tough. It is tough. And that's why I always you get these people online and people in the streets and who who you know point at you and laugh at you and snigger at you and make fun at you. you, you you just can't do it. You just can't do it. It's not cool because you just don't know what people what, what's going on behind behind closed doors. You you don't know what's going on behind the smile. You, you don't know what's going on, you know, in in people's heads. And um, it's you know that that word kind of banter is it's it's not it's not banter and it's it's not funny. And, um, and you know the there's there's like such a double edged sword to, to social media. You know the fact that we can use social media like this is is for me why it's so good and why it's so positive because we can use it for a, a positive platform but then you've got the other side of social media the, the dark side that where people go on and and, and bully and troll um yeah. and it, it really it, it really is uh it, it, it's a it's a really really dark place at times and um i've i've kind of stepped back a lot from social media i don't i just kind of try and keep it as less personal as possible because you know 
you just find out that the more opinion you give, people just people just love to knock you down and love to to tell you that you're wrong and love to you know have have a go at you. Um, so I just try and now keep it as, you know, as kind of simple as possible. I not to say too much on there now because well, I, I don't see the point or the value in it. About those opinions and that, those viewpoints that people give us, but when they come from people that we don't know or we don't often interact with, strangers, they can be really hurtful and they can really, really make a difference in, in how we think about ourselves or how we think of the world. You know, one comment can can eradicate twenty good comments on a post, and they then lose complete, you know, self worth, um, self value. And you, you said rightly there with young people in this day and age, you know, there's. There's nights that I'd want to be a young person on, on Instagram or on social media in this day and age. And you're a sitting duck. You're at the point in your life where by pin, you're easily manipulated, you're easily influenced. One day you're a vegan, the next day you're a bodybuilder. You know, what you feel is gospel. And like you say, you know, there are so many people that do all that influence in one image. And yet you think that that's 100% of their day, every day. They're all living that high life on social media and and, and unfortunately are no longer with us anymore because of their mental illnesses. And, and that's really sad, you know? Um, yeah, so no, you've, you've said it in pretty... one, Chris. It's a really good point, mate. Really good point. Oh, and you spoke to me about headspace. A bit of headspace uh, in the morning time and, and the evening time, just if it's 10, 15 minutes of um, just trying to relax the mind and, and calm the mind down. Um, uh, and then just music, just where I can, just watch music or personal videos or, you know, go, go on YouTube and, and see see what's um what's on there because uh like i say it's uh it's it, it can be tough sometimes um so yeah i would say i would say music and a bit of meditation is is what does it for me so thanks to, to dolan there aaron he's so so honest i, I really respect his honesty and the, and the detail that, that he went into and speaking about the things that, that triggered his, his mental health problems just what what were your thoughts from from what dolan said yeah i you know <laughs> overwhelmingly powerful because what, what we what we saw there with Don was kind of you know that real striving love for wanting to be happy and uh, and all of those experiences that he's gone through in, in his kind of childhood with his bullying being at school that lack of confidence that he's experienced for a lot of his life um, and how he's always striving to kind of seek those those things that he can do to improve it you know his house his music um, and it comes from a very different angle, I think, from from the others that we've had on tonight, you know. And I think that's that's something that we really need to be grateful for tonight is that kind of variety of, of things that people do and people experience within their mental frameworks. Um, so, yeah, amazing to have him on. You know, he's, he's such a gent, he's such a lovely lad. Um, yeah. and, and honesty is always the best policy. I, I can't fault anyone that comes on here. Uh, or comes onto any platform and, and, and speaks the truth because the truth is what will change other people's lives. You know, the, the, the sooner we stop beating around the bush and, and get men to talk about how real things are in our life, the better things will be, mate. Yeah, because Dole and not from the minute I met him, just an absolute heart of gold, probably the, the, one of the nicest, most kindest and genuine people that I know. And from, from minute one, it's always been very honest about his mental health and same with same with Ty really as well he's always nothing but but honest about everything would we'll do anything for, for for anyone it's like a genuine shame to see really really good people struggle but then just so much to admire about that that honesty as well yeah absolutely and you know like i said to you before there's no specific labels with whether you're a good person or you're a bad person and you'll get a mental illness or you'll struggle with your mental health there's no labeling mate and unfortunately there's a hell of a lot of good people in this world that, that struggle with their mental well-being um and we, we have to look out for each other you know we are we are a community i don't care where you're from what you do we are a community and we have to stand by each other and i think tonight all five of us have, have shown that and, and, have, and have given everybody real evidence that when you stand together and you talk together and you share your experiences together, you know, it can be very powerful. We're only five people on a very little platform. You know, we're not celebrities. We're not we're not professionals. We're not we're not top dogs anywhere in this world. No, no. We're just good people, good human beings that want to help other people and, and want to help ourselves and provide other people with a bit of education and a bit of awareness and a bit of understanding about what mental health is and, and, and how people can look after themselves better. So I think it's great, mate. It's great. Yeah, I mean, it's important to say that, that I'm not, not just sat here thinking I'm, I'm the bee's knees. Every, everyone listen to me. We Like you say, it's, it's a very minute platform. 
in comparison to, to what else is out there. But if we can even just speak to a couple of people that might watch this video and might get some help from it, might get some understanding of things from it, then it, it's been worth doing. And as we're all, as I say, we're mainly Villa fans watching this, but you know what, we've all got something in common. We've all got a football team in common. Let's all look out for each other. Let's all look after each other. You shouldn't see Villa fans on social media going at each other. We, we've, we've all got a, a common love. Let's all just try and look out for each other and look out for ourselves a little bit more. And you, you talk about these good people who can get mental health issues. Let's talk about the three resources above our heads. What what resources can these good people use? Because you'll know more about them than I do. Yeah, no problem, mate. Yeah, three fantastic resources, um, all quite different as well in their own right, really. So Andy's Man's Club is the first one. Uh, it's a fairly new initiative. I think it's only been going for kind of the last two, three years. And the founder of that is an ex-professional rugby league player, uh, Luke, Law Luke, Luke Ambler who set up the Andy's Man's Club to kind of give men um, a one session a week jobby all across the UK in different cities, towns, uh, whereby men can just get together for a coffee and a Coke and a pint and, and speak about their mental well-being and, and feel no, no judgment and, and enter a room feeling like other people understand them uh, and can give them kind of experiences and shared life goals and um, ideas and, and things to work with to support themselves better and um, there's also a self-referral system there so by you can kind of tap into local mental health services if, if, if needs be um, there's a lot of clubs that Andy Mann's club deliver where people talk about their suicide and they talk about their experiences with that some people are in recovery some people are going through some of the toughest times in their life but there is no um, there are no boundaries, really, um, and, and kind of the session just runs itself. And it's such a wonderful place to be able to speak to other men about what they're going through and, 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 and how they deal with their mental health. Um, the next one is Mind. Everybody knows Mind. It's a huge sponsor at the highest levels, um, and it's one of the best and one of the most successful mental health charities in the UK. Uh, I think they do some other stuff worldwide as well now. Um, but Mind is a mental health charity, so they provide online support, guidance, information, signposting, um, less one-to-one -one services, I think. Um, but they work in very different departments across the board. So they have a physical education department. They have a learning difficulties department. They have an LGBT department. They have every, every department that you could imagine it within local communities they work in. Um, and they, they provide a hell of a lot of funding to other charities that are much smaller than them to be able to provide facilities to, to local resources and local people. Um, and the last one is CALM, which is Campaign Against Living Miserably. So this is kind of very men specific. They do support women, but it's quite a man specific charity. Um, it's, it's a more one to one uh, telephone, text messaging, confidential kind of service whereby people can call up and text in and, and get some advice and guidance, particularly in that crisis point. So for a lot of men, um, who are in crisis point, who who kind of are struggling with their mental health, but at times it gets really bad that they need that kind of go-to point. Uh, Calm is a fantastic resource for that. There's also guidance online and a check-in service and all sorts of stuff. So those three are fantastic. There are way more. Um, and over yeah. the coming days and weeks, I'll, I'll tweet out about them and kind of link it back to this. But those are the three that I recommend men have a, have a look at uh, because I know people will be watching tonight crying out for something that they can get in touch with. And those three are prime examples for that. Yeah, there's different things work for different people as well. I know Dolan uses Headspace quite a lot. I can't sit here and claim to know a lot about it, but I know that's something, an app on his phone that, that really helps him on a daily basis. So there's plenty of stuff out there. Watch out for Aaron's social media. You can see his Twitter handle at the bottom of the screen there. I'm going to be honest, my eyesight's not that great and I, I can't read it. Aaron, can you just tell us what your, what your Twitter handle is? Yeah, so my Twitter handle is AMC89AVFC. Of course it is. Yeah. I mean, it sounded like you didn't know that either, but, but but never mind. And yeah, just to finish, just want to thank Luke, everyone at Luke Roper for, for letting us do this. They've, they've basically entrusted us to put put their name on, on something here. And we, we really, really appreciate the, the freedom and the trust and the, that they wanted us to do this as well, because they believe it's an important thing as well. So a massive thanks to everyone at Luke Roper for letting us do this. I've just realised the show is called the Luke Live Lounge. And really, in the end, there's been nothing live about it, but... We move, we see what happens. There's nothing we can do about that now. And yeah, lastly, just try and be a good person. Try and look out for each other. Look out for yourself. If you're struggling, reach out, speak to someone. It's very, very important. You could save your own life. Check in with your friends. You could save their life. It's just, just basically be a good person, be nice to each other. And as always, up the villa. <laughs>